All right, good morning. Let's see if this is working. All right, good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing fine. I did go a little bit earlier than usual today, it was a few minutes, because I am on a new system and I'm testing out the system. And I'm just going to spend the first couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> you can clearly you can clearly hear my uh, you can clearly hear my cat. <laughs> so so this is going to be a little bit uh, different from usual because this is the first time I'm using this new system and I am still going to start at 12 noon as we agreed on. I just want to verify a couple of things and then we can start with our uh, lecture for the day. So I am a little bit validating that um, I can swap and move to uh, the charts only. Um, I am validating a couple of things and we will start in three minutes to make sure that this system is working well. All right, so let's see a little bit. And here we go. All right, cool, awesome. Um, so All right, let's see. Can you hear me? Is I, I got a message that you cannot hear me. Uh, is this the case? Can you not hear me? Or can you please verify if you can hear me or not? Good morning, Aitak. Uh, good morning, um, Venkatesan. Uh, good morning, Emin. Good morning, Wow. So I have a text that you cannot hear me. Can you confirm if you can hear me or not, please? Just to make sure that uh, I don't talk to myself for the next 20 minutes. Okay, so people can hear me. So that's good. The system is working. Um, this is the this is the first time I do a broadcast from this new system, and we're gonna go ahead and try it out and see how it works. And um, you know, like uh, this is uh, we we try. This was nothing short of an amazing month, and we keep on trying. So today's topic is going to be very, very, very interesting. Um, today's topic is going to be, we're going to be talking about uh, the ABD matrix. Um, this topic requires, to be fair, a month of its own, because I need to build the building bricks of um, computing different elements. and. Um, and and so on. But uh, this is an introduction. And what I have prepared is uh, on the archive page. So this is one of the things why the system should be better. Let me go ahead and flip it so that you can see better the bigger page. So on the archive page, you know, when you access my LinkedIn and um, there is this feature, uh, this element, and I can make it scroll also on uh, the banner. So you can see it at the bottom as well. On the archive page, um, I did post two extra YouTube videos that where I'm solving uh, certain problems in details. So this is a video like with, so today is going to be a real design uh, lecture. And you can see like the full details of problem solving. And I did place the problem in here. And then also I placed another video where you can see, and this was, a little bit before this coronavirus where I still had hair and before I decided to, um, to, to, to raise everything. So this is something that you can see on your own. I'm going to go ahead and close them. So it is, it is posted on the archive page where I post the lectures and in the end I upload um, the link. So with this being said, let's go ahead and uh, start today's lecture. Um, and you let me know if there is anything I can do. This is a new setup for me. So I'm going to be trying some things in parallel, um, you know, trying to uh, shuffle the screen, trying to see if 
Um, this is a little bit uh, easier for me because the system I was using before was so harsh and um, and I'm trying a new system. And this is this is an experience on its own for everyone, which is don't stick to what you know. Like don't stick because you got comfortable with the system and you stick to that system. Try something out. And the last two weeks, I've been trying so many different systems, but I've been sticking to what I know. Like I was afraid from change. And I decided today, you know what? I'm going to embrace the change and I am going to go ahead and try a new system. And so far, so good. And um, hopefully this will be work. So it is 12 noon. It is time for our lecture. I just want to run a small test first, which is I want to talk only on the slides. So I want to see if I maximize the slides, if you can still hear me. So uh, this is a small test. I did not really start. But basically, right now, you should only be seeing the slides and not seeing me. And then I can swap between these different views. Can you go ahead and confirm by a like, by a clap, by something, if you can actually see um, very easily the slides and that it's working uh, for you guys? All right. I already see so many folks saying this is better. I'm very happy to hear that. So this actually also gives me a lot of flexibility. I am very happy and pleased. All right. So let's go ahead and get started then because this is working and everyone is uh, ready to uh, get started. There is a feature which says I can post some of your comments uh, live, but I don't know how to do it yet. So one thing at a time. Today we get through the lecture and uh, we move on to that. All right, let's get started. So this is a little bit um, the, the ABD matrix. And what we are talking about in here, what we are trying to emphasize is how do we design these composites? We talked so much about tailoring them. We said you put a certain... Uh, ply on top of a ply on top of a ply and you build the thickness and then suddenly you are capable of um, tailoring the load. But how does this really work? And today, this is the goal of this lecture, is to make sure that you understand that composites, unlike if you apply an extension, um, you, you expect an elongation along this orientation, you might apply an extension force and that can lead to a twist in your part. But where does this come from? And this is what we are going to delve into the detail of that. So looking into uh, looking into the, the elements, this is uh, the ABD matrix. So the ABD matrix is a six by six matrix that connects uh, loads and strains. So we are always, every time, what we're trying to do is we are trying to understand if you apply stress, if you apply a certain value of stress, and that value of stress is how does it translate into strains? Stress, strain, that's the whole thing. Remember, we talked about the elastic portion. We talked about the plastic portion. We talked about how much force an element can withstand in order to do a certain deformation. So. The ABD matrix is a six by six matrix that uh, connects, applies load and strain. It is very similar to what we say is a stiffness matrix, but it's a combination of three matrices, A, B, and D. It's actually four matrices. It's A, B, C, and D, but the, the C matrix is the same as the B matrix, and we're going to take a look into it. It's nothing but a, an integration. So this is why we say ABD matrix and we skip the... Uh, C element. All right. So it helps us to provide a basic understanding of how the composite will uh, behave. So before showing you a little bit how um, the ABD matrix is generated, let's take a look at how it looks like in the end. So this is, if you want, how I like to even explain it to my students. Let's jump all the way to the conclusion and see how it's going to look like and then start building those uh, building bricks together, all right? And I apologize if I'm flipping between different setups very, very quickly. 
uh, I'm going to be fixated between two setups. This is one of them where you can see me and the slides in the background. And the second one, which is where you see the full slides, just like now in here, uh, when I have to uh, explain something and detail it. So you're going to be only seeing these two, I promise, and I will not get you guys dizzy. That's not my intention. So this is a little bit the conclusion. This is how I, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the matrix, the ABD matrix. Take a look at it. You have on the left forces and moments. And we'll discover a little bit later that these are not really the full force and not the real moment. I mean, their units are um, Newton per meter for the force. And we all know that the unit of the force is Newton. And the unit of the moment is going to be just a Newton. And we all know that the unit of the moment is Newton meters. So it is the integration across the thickness. We'll deal with that in a little bit uh, time. So on the other side, what we have is strains and curvatures at the midplane. So in the composite world, what we try to do is we try to understand in the middle of that composite what's happening. And then we try to create a relationship across the uh, thickness of the composite. All right. So this is how it's going to look like. There's going to be a matrix connecting six elements on the, on the left with six elements on the right. What are these six elements? You're going to see extension. So the normal forces that you know, extension, compression, so like that. But you're going to see shear. So you're going to see the shear um, uh, forces. You're going to see the bending moment, so M of X, M of Y, and you're also going to see twisting. So imagine all of these uh, four different behaviors that we can have. They are connected, all of them, with the properties of the midplane strains, the midplane uh, shear, the midplane curvature, the midplane twist, all of these different elements through this matrix. So if I tell you as of now, to take a look into it once again and try to, um, does, does the mouse move when I move it on the slide? So can you confirm to me that you can see uh, uh, the mouse when I move it? So because this can be useful sometimes as I'm pointing out to something. So right now I'm pointing like to NX, NY, NX of Y and so on. All right, so uh, as I'm waiting to hear your comments, if you guys can see my mouse, um, let's continue. So this means that you are connecting one element, which is just a um, which is just a force from the extension element. You're connecting it to all of these different components. So basically, what we can think is having a, a extension force can lead to certain can lead to certain other properties if and only if those elements in the matrix are not null. And this is what we are uh, going to, this is what we are, this is what we are going to uh, discover together. So this is the conclusion of the lecture. And this is what we're going to demonstrate and we're going to go through together. And in case you have to understand it more, there are these additional resources and these uh, additional uh, videos. All right. So let's take a look into uh, let's take a look into the uh, across the thickness. So what we talk about and what we're trying to deal is because of discontinuity in the stress variations, the resultants are obtained by integrating across the thickness. Keep this in mind. This is very, very important. Keep this in mind. Your laminate is built as you do the midplane and then you try to see across the thickness. So if you have 16 plies, you take the fictitious midplane between 8 and 9, and this would be your, let's say, zero height, and then you will start having your Z values across the thickness. And this is what it is uh, looking like in here. So if you see this, this is the midplane, and then we are, if this was the laminate, and the laminate is, is composed of different uh, elements, you can actually uh, take a look and see that the strain variations, so we are assuming it is linear, 
Uh, this is an assumption in the world of composites, tons of assumptions, and this is one of them. Of course, you can do uh, calculations and different elements with different kinds of strain variation, but also this is the stress variation, which for sure is not linear, because what will happen is that you are going to have what you're going to have. You're going to have different responses. Not necessarily you are building a composite of the same material, the same size and everything. You might be building something because you want a certain bending to happen when you apply a certain force. Think about, I don't know, military applications. You want something when you apply a push on it, it will twist. This can be, this is the strength of composite because you can design for uh, such an element. So this is important to take a look that this is across the thickness and that like the, the variation is not linear. So once again, this is the mid plane of your composite and this is when you're looking into that. So this is what we are doing. So, and this is an example from that we took from MathWorks for the, um, the stress and failure analysis of multi-directional laminates. So this is when you have a zero on top of 45, on top of a different element. Take a look into this once again. What we have is these six terms are nothing but your usual stress, shear, bending, uh, torsion elements, but they are integrated across the thickness. Hence, the unit. A lot of time when people are working with this, they're like, hold on, you are saying NX is a um, NX is a force, but then at the end of the calculation, you have a unit of Newton per meter. I mean, if you look at it in here, it's the integration of a stress along a, uh, a distance. So stress, Newton per meter square, distance, meter, Newton per meter square times meter ends up giving you Newton per meter. But keep in mind that this is along the integration, along the thickness, and you're not taking into account the width so that you can accommodate for uh, these different elements. So what we have is these six different integrations, and each one of them is uh, represented in here in this, um, in this element. And finally, oh, let's start with a question. So as you, as you guys are answering this one, true or false, the stress variations through the layers in a laminate is linear. So I am going to try to see if I can see your comments in the system. I can see them on my screen. So it is very clear for me, but all right, let's see. So let's see your answers. Um, the stress variations through the layers in a laminate is linear is this true or false all right let's see a little bit what you guys are saying and i lost my linkedin all right i can see already mr venkatesan said false um boren said false Cinti b which is false hello everyone i now remember that um Neptali, Sir Pignon, welcome back. We've missed you. We've missed you for a couple of sessions. All right, so yes, you got it right. It is false. Let's take a look back into the diagram in here. This is the stress variations, and it's almost impossible that you are going to have a uh, linear variation when it comes to uh, uh, the stress variations. All right, well, we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about what does it mean to have balance, what does it mean to have symmetric, and what's the influence on the ABD matrix, and how does uh, this correlate? Excellent question, Cynthia. All right, so with that, let's switch and start talking about the reduced stiffness matrix. Okay, so if you've never heard of this, or you've never seen this, this might suddenly appear too complicated, but it is just a we are exploding instead of having one stiffness element because suddenly we have 
um, a inhomogeneous. So you have your matrix and you have your reinforcement. Each one have its own uh, stiffness values, have its own properties, has its own Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, and uh, shear interlaminar ratio. So each one has their own. And then add to it, not only you're mixing two dissimilar material, and the term mixing is not correct, you are composing two dissimilar materials to create your composite. On top of it, what you're doing is you are stacking them and not in the same way. So you're not stacking like a zero on top of zero on top of a zero. You're stacking a zero and then there's an angle. So if you want, there is one building brick, which is this stiffness matrix, and this is reduced. It's reduced because this starts as 81 terms and then you start taking uh, different properties and different similarities all the way to say, all right, you know what, let's reduce it. And this is why you see Q11, Q22, Q66, because we have omitted everything that is in between 3, 4, 5. This is a topic on its own. But long story short, this is a reduced stiffness matrix that is relevant to one ply along the orientation. That is, that is relevant to uh, the properties of your composite. So let me see if I um, um, mix this one up. So I'm going to go ahead and, oops, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see here. So this is an example. So this is an example of, oops, let me go ahead and maximize this. This is an example of find the ABD matrix for a graphite epoxy laminate. You have different orientations. And then you have these properties, E1, E2, mu 1, 2, that's Poisson's ratio, G1, 2, and so on. And from that, you go on to actually calculate in here. So from these properties, E1, mu 1, 2, so mu 2, 1, you can calculate that using uh, the reciprocity um, uh, relationship, Betty Maxwell, and Q11, Q22, Q12, Q66, you calculate them and then you suddenly have your fully detailed matrix. Once again, this is a topic on its own, but what you need to know is we have a way to understand the responses within a ply that correlates between stresses and strain. Now we're going to take that and build another, put on it another building brick. So level one, we know how to correlate in a, uh, for a laminate in its mm -hmm. major direction, stresses and strain. Then we move on to the next layer, which is we don't have our composite, all of its zeros on top of each other. So we don't have that. So what we're going to have is a transformation matrix. And this transformation matrix is going to help us to take that reduced stiffness matrix and compute what we call the transformed stiffness matrix which is our Q bar, which takes into account the geometrical transformation. Your zero degree is now in 30 degrees. Once again, those other videos have all of these uh, details, like with calculations and uh, so on. So taking a look into this and saying that the fiber angle that I have, let's say, is a 30 degrees, you can calculate this transformation matrix, of course, um, you can calculate the inverse, you can calculate the inverse of the transpose, multiply these three matrices together, but you're going to have this. And this is the beauty of having this calculation. You have your stresses, you have your strains, and you have a matrix creating the relationship between them despite having the angle. So that's the second building brick for the ABD matrix. So the first one is, hey, we understood how we mix these things together. And I should really stop using the term mix, but more of how we can uh, compose these things together because I don't want anyone to think that this is an alloy. Then we understand how we can reorient the ply to understand the relationship. Hey, what happened if you have a certain angle and so on? And now comes the third uh, uh, level, which is, now that you know this and you know that, let's go ahead and take the thickness because the ABD matrix has to 
somehow summarize all of these different elements. It has to summarize how at the level of, let's go ahead and see this uh, slide on a larger screen, like this is very clear for everyone, how we can take all of these that we've done into account and take, of course, the Z. So it is the thickness. Keep this in mind. You are going across the thickness. Your composite, if you want, let me give a quick example. Let's say each ply is one millimeter and you have a composite that has eight applies. So in the mid plane, you're going to be zero. And then you're going to be going minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. One, two, three, and so on. So we always take composites with respect to uh, the mid plane, the calculations. And going back into this, what we can see is that the um, that we calculate these elements function of two things. And I did skip a complete lecture in here because these six elements, they come from the fact coming up with a relationship, uh, correlating the strains at any point in the thickness with, uh, with the curvature and the distance. So there is, there is a major step that was missed in here, but once again, this is three, four weeks of lectures that we are trying to bundle into one so that you get an idea of this. And we calculate these different elements. So the reason why we say it's an ABD matrix is because this term is the same as this term. And therefore, it's A, B, B, D. But for simplification, it's just called ABD matrix. Now, what do they represent? What do they represent? The a element represents the in-plane stiffness, and we're going to talk about that. The B element represents the extension bending coupling. So, and the D is the out-of-plane uh, stiffness. Let's go ahead and take a look in detail about these terms. This is how we calculate them. And in here, this is the thickness of the layer. So, of course, K represents the case layer. And in here, you have... I actually, uh, I actually have in the uh, YouTube problem that uh, you guys have access to, I actually have detailed my own method of calculation, uh, which when I was a student, I had recourse to because it's, it was much, much easier. So you can take a look into, um, into that. So you have the difference between the delta between the squares, the deltas between the cubes, and don't forget this term in here. And this is how... After we have calculated the Q bar, which is the transformed reduced stiffness matrix for each layer, we can multiply them by these parameters to compute the A, B, D matrix. And this is how it looks like. So if you remember the first term that we talked about, this is how it looks like. So, all right. If you focus with me for the next couple of minutes, you will be able to understand each one of these parameters, what they connect to which element. These four terms that you see in front of you, A11, A12, A21, A22, these are the extension extension. So think of it this way. This is extension, extension, shear, MX is bending, MY is bending, MXY is torsion, twisting. This is strain X, so this is extension. Extension, gamma XY is shear. This is bending, KX, bending, KY, and uh, twisting torsion, KX, Y, zero. So each turn that you take a look into, so if you see A11, A11, it connects, A11, it connects NX with Epsilon X, and this means that this is an extension extension because it is connecting an extension element with another extension element. Nx, if you take B16, so Nx, B16 is connecting Nx with Kxy. So this is an extension twisting uh, element. So you see a little bit what's special about composites because you can create a composite that has a... ABD matrix, where this ABD matrix can have parameters connecting a twisting 
with an extension. So you can tailor a product that if you apply an extension force, it will just twist. That's a little bit the power of uh, composites. So let's take a look at the next sequence of uh, the different elements in the matrix. You have A16, A26, A16, A26. They are connecting NX, which is an extension, or NY, which is an extension, so all of them, with gamma XY, which is a shear. So these are extension shear coupling. A66 is connecting NXY with gamma XY. So this is a shear shear. The B11, B12, B12, B22, they are connecting the extension. So look at this in here, NX with KX and KY. So they are connecting the extension with the bending. So you can create an element that connects these two terms. You can have an extension creating a bending once again. This, these, these elements, they connect shear with bending. So you can take a look at them. This is uh, B16 and so on. Shear and twisting, B66. So once again, you take NXY, you go here, it gives you B66. B66 connects with KXY. So this is, is it's connecting NXY, which is shear, with a twisting element and so on. Bending, bending. So MX is getting connected to KX. Both of them are bending, twisting, bending, and finally twisting, twisting. And of course, of course, it's going to be so hard. Hey, suddenly you understand how, what is, how you calculate an ABD matrix. This is something that requires three, four weeks that I build up for in a course before I get to this point. But with a little bit of knowledge, if you go through the videos and you do this, you can, hey, you understand the gist and the essence of it. And this is how it looks like. Let's maximize the graph. This is what it means. A11 extension extension means if you apply an extension force, the part will extend itself. B11, which is an extension bending, if you remember, it's an extension bending, which means if you apply an extension force, you're going to have a bending of the part. B13, which was a extension, so it, and it, this is B16 in other terminologies, so sometimes people, to simplify, they stop using 6, they start using 3s. I like to use a 6 because it uh, refers to the original matrix that was 6 by 6, that was reduced to 3 by 3. So B13, it's connecting you, your extension, to twisting. So basically, look at this graph in here that I'm circling. I'm trying to circle with the mouse. An extension will create a twist for you. All right. So, so this is what's so interesting about composites. And I see so many of you um, pressing the light bulb because this is a good moment where, um, where. So, so Cindy, you said something about um, having balance, having symmetric. So in case you have a symmetric laminate, remember like 0, 90, 90, 0. This is a symmetric laminate. All of the B matrix becomes null. And actually, one of the videos demonstrates how B becomes null. And you have different properties that can uh, reduce this uh, matrix. All right. Let's wrap it up for today. Which of... Uh, okay, let me put the screen bigger so that I can see it myself. Which of the below parameters represents a shear twisting component? So take a look at the left. Which one is shear? Take a look at the, at the right. Which one is twist? And try to find which element represents this uh, shear twisting component. So as you are trying this, I'm going to try something myself. So... But da -da -dum. here banners. Da -da. Yes, it works. All right. So as I'm looking for your answers and trying to did it move to my screen? All right, perfect. So 
which one of these they represent the shear twist component. So I'm going to go ahead and start solving it as you are answering me. On the left, an X represent and NY represents extension. So I'm going to skip the first two lines. NXY is what represents shear. So I'm going to start taking a look into all the term. I'm going to start uh, looking into all the terms that are um, in this shear component. So A16, A26, A66, B16, B26, and B66. Uh, then I'm going to start looking into where is the, um, where is the twisting? So if I'm looking into the twisting, I'm going to look twist is represented by KXY. So which term is connecting NXY with KXY not zero? And this would be the answer. C, it is B66. I understand this is very hard. This is not easy. I'll be very fair with you. I thought very heavily before doing this lecture, but I just wanted you to know that there is a whole other dimensions to composites that is relevant to the design of composites and maybe one of those sessions. So actually, I am going to be doing weekly shows now. So after we end up in April, I'm going to take a long break and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do like one weekly show and then I can start perhaps going into more details or you can see my YouTube videos for that. All right, so in summary, let's summarize what we did today. We understood the ABD matrix is a key element in the analysis and design of composite. Long story short, ABD matrices relate applied loads and strains. It is derived from the transform reduced stiffness matrix and process parameter is very dependent on the material and the hardware. So. With that, I wrap up today's lecture. Thank you so much for listening to me. Let me know if this system worked better than the other system. I already have a feeling that this is way better, but go ahead and uh, share this with me. Put it on the chat. Let me know what you think, if this was, if this was better. And we will go ahead and I will go ahead and tomorrow test again the system with a guest. So tomorrow we're having a guest from uh, equipment. So for the next two days, we're having equipment manufacturers, uh, Electro Impact and Ingersoll machine tools. Uh, we're going to have Kyle Jeffries and Chris Chaya for the next two days. And it's going to be very, very interesting uh, lectures. So thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I am going to try to end the broadcast and, uh, and hopefully it works and talk to you tomorrow.